The now 50-year-old war on poverty in the United States, as well as the creation of Medicare and Medicaid, lifted many seniors out of poverty. Still, it is very present, the daily struggles of making ends meet. There is no extra. You're lucky if you make it from, from day to day, month to month. Lucy Vaughn of Baltimore, who survived a brain tumor, lives on $8,500 a year in Social Security payments, well below the poverty line of about $11,000. When people think of poverty in America, seniors like Vaughn may not come to mind. We have a tendency to think, well, if you've, you're a senior citizen, you, you have everything. You get Medicare and you get Social Security. You're well taken care of, but they're not. Across the country, 9% of older Americans, disproportionately women and minorities, live in poverty. That number shoots up to 15% under a new measure of poverty developed by the Census Bureau. It takes into account out-of-pocket spending on health care, differences in the cost of living across the country, and other factors. And in some states, poverty rates under the new measure are considerably higher. An analysis by the Kaiser Family Foundation using this new measure shows roughly one in five seniors in California, New York, Louisiana, Georgia, Hawaii, and Nevada lives in poverty. In Washington, D.C., about one of every four seniors, and that is the highest in the nation. The irony is, yes, people can see the Washington Monument out of their homes, yet they can't get to a grocery store, they can't afford healthy food, they can't get medications. It's a true tragedy. 35 miles away in Baltimore, 72-year-old Vaughn lives a modest life, made better by the help of her daughter, who lives nearby. Vaughn had to retire as a home health care worker because of her own health crisis, which is a key driver in pushing older people into poverty. Even with Medicare supplemented by Medicaid, a program Vaughn qualified for because of her diminished income, one crisis led to another, unaffordable housing. The rent was more money than I was getting from Social Security. Mm -hmm. So there was no way I could pay the rent. Vaughn found her way to senior housing owned by Catholic Charities of Baltimore. Maryland's largest social services provider outside of government. She pays less than $100 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Among low-income seniors in Baltimore City and surrounding counties, where Catholic Charities maintains about two dozen senior communities, you can count her lucky. Our waiting list is 3,000. We're a proxy for what else is going on in Maryland and throughout the country. In the southern tip of West Virginia, 65-year-old Kenneth Carter created a home he could afford, a 10 by 20 storage unit he outfitted with electricity and plumbing. Health problems before he qualified for Medicare accelerated his descent into poverty. Carter says he accumulated $50,000 in medical debt for treatment of hepatitis C and then a liver transplant. Now some providers demand payment up front. They've told me quite a few times at different hospitals, uh, if you don't pay this co-payment, we cannot see you today. Uh, you can come back when you have the money. Carter has a car for necessities like getting to a doctor, but he uses it sparingly. Sometimes my car will sit there a week, a week and a half, and I don't drive it, don't, I don't move it. I, I drive it when I have to, when I go to the grocery store or, or a doctor's appointment. And uh, so I don't, I don't spend very much on gas. When Carter does get to the grocery store, fresh foods are out of reach on a budget that includes $16 a month in food stamps. Just about every time that I go to the store, I'll be looking at the fruits and the vegetables and I want to get it, but I know I can't, so I just whistle on by and buy what I can, yeah. The healthiest meals he eats come from the McDowell County Commission on Aging, a program funded by the state and federal governments and donations. 
home delivered and community meals feed needy seniors in this once thriving coal mining town. How nourishing is a microwave meal or how nourishing is a sandwich and a can of soup? I think they probably would go hungry without our home delivered meals and our meals plan here. A recent national study shows nearly 5 million older Americans, most living below or just above the poverty line, at times cannot get adequate or nutritious food. We're not talking about starvation, thank God, but we are talking about people who are in fact going hungry, that they don't know where the next meal is going to come from. We do have people who go to bed at night wondering, am I going to eat tomorrow? In Los Angeles, 79-year-old Maria Arasso and her 80-year-old husband Juan live on Social Security, about $18,000 a year. That, they say, is barely enough to make ends meet in one of the nation's most expensive cities. Nos preocupa porque no, no tenemos mucha solvencia, pero ahí paramos poco a poco. The difference between solvency and debt is Medicare and Medicaid. The Arasos, like 20% of the elderly in California, are in both programs. No podríamos, de ninguna manera. Even with the support of government programs as well as a patchwork of social services and local charities, to be old and poor in America is simply hard. It is very difficult to have your voice heard above the din and to have people actually take this thing seriously. We ought to take it seriously. You stand on the, the seesaw and you try to balance yourself. But I know, I know one day it's gonna go. I know that. If the rent goes up, if food stamps are reduced, if Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security are scaled back, those changes could tip that delicate balance for many seniors living on the edge. For the Kaiser Family Foundation, this is Jackie Judd.